As you can see from the wet puddles on the floor, we had a torrential rain yesterday and the logs are just really wet. It rained all day, just about and all night long. And that has a tendency to discolor them a little bit. As you can see, we've come up in our walls quite a bit since the last video was actually taken. This is seawall that I'm leaning against and we've got the fourth round up. And on A wall, we have the fifth round up and we'll have to get the other round on C wall and then set the B and D wall, which I'm leaning up against here. And then we'll have a couple, three more rounds and we'll be setting the floor joists. One of the things that's been quite easier is our blocking in a, at an opening. Since we do have a flat surface here, we do true them up and I'll check it with a torpedo level and make sure that it is sitting level here on the top where I put my blocking. But we are starting out with just a, it's just a square block. We're setting this up here when we set our log and then with the little center marks, I don't know that you can see that, that's pretty light. We can tell when we put our strings across what we need to raise the log itself. And what I've been using is just three quarter inch plywood. And I can take my little small power planter and I can plant it down to exactly what I need. And that has really made it nice. I'm not having to carry a bunch of different thicknesses of shims like I do when I'm working live edge. This has really been uh, an easy way to go. Okay, this is the center line right here. It's just a little small mark on the end of the log and my string. And I'm just taking my little steel ruler and just holding it up there and just finding me a mark. I'm using three on my center line. Just make sure I'm not hanging up anywhere. And I'm right about five eighths of an inch that I actually need to raise this end of this log. So what we've been doing on these short logs, you kind of, it's kind of like a seesaw. You have to kind of work with it a little bit. But I'll, I'll take one of my three quarter inch uh, pieces of plywood blocking and I'll plant it down to about five eighths of an inch and we can set it up here on top of this block and it should be getting us in the neighborhood of where we need to be. I have the string up there and it's pulled pretty tight and right here is the center line on this particular log and I've got to bring this up to this on both ends. This one here is down so I'm gonna need to bring that in so I can actually tell exactly where I am with that. I'm just gonna mark five eighths of an inch here on this block and we'll make a mark right there so that I can kind of tell when to stop with the planer. Now what I'll be do what I've got here I've got two three penny finish nails just driven into this uh, piece of plywood here and I can bump my block against that and I can keep flipping it around when I'm planing, and that way if my planer's cutting a little heavy on one side, I'm keeping this, this surface pretty much flat. Okay, we'll put this on top of our two before block and see what we're doing on our line. Okay, how we've been raising these, now this one is light enough to uh, actually raise by hand, but I've got two wedges that are pretty thick and we can just tap. I've got one on the inside and one on the outside and I can just start tapping that up and bringing the one on the outside in at the same time. I still need to go about a quarter of an inch Okay, I'm just a little bit, my string is a little bit below my mark. So I should be able to put my, my plywood in there that I just fixed. And I can tap these wedges back out. You have to do this kind of gentle because you don't want to knock a log off the wall. Okay, I think I can live with that. That's right on the center line good.
Okay, that's got this log where it's not shaking anymore. So we're safe now with that. This wall is 42 feet long. You can get a little shaky. And so we've got our temporary bracing in. And once we get a log where we need it, we'll come back and I'll run some three inch torque screws into the end of the log. That way I can take them out easily and I can kind of keep the log itself. I'm keeping it about an inch and a half from the two before that we have braced up there. It's just got a angle brace coming down. And then I've got a two before screwed to the floor and then I'm screwed into that. It's just a real simple brace, but it, it holds well. But I can come back now and run these screws in and that'll take any shake out of this log right here in this part of the wall. This is actually the doorway. We've left these logs a little bit long on purpose going into the doorway so that when we can come back and trim them out and cut them exactly what they need to be. There'll be uh, four windows on this front wall. There'll be a window there. I think these are 30 by 60 inch windows. We'll have to cut out on this log here down to accommodate the height of the window. And there's another window right here. Now, I did not cut these out intentionally because you can see the cut line right here where it needs to be cut. We would be dealing with such a short log right here. It's kind of difficult to keep this much of a wall and 40 foot together and going up straight and plumb and level and all of that trying to work little short pieces. So we'll come back and we'll cut this out after we get ready to put the cap over log, the log, the header log that will go over the top of the window. Then we'll come out, come back and cut all this down and put our angle iron in. We've used this tractor with the forks on it and we've gone as high as we can with it. And we have a new machine that arrived yesterday and it works great. Meet Daisy. This is a 10,000 pound, 54 foot reach sky track, and it will do anything that we need to do from now on. This thing is sweet. Okay, we're getting ready to uh, set CL, which has a splice in it, and we're going to Get this baby up here. Dan's on the ground, or on the floor rather. And David is on the machine. This is so nice. Oh my gosh. We're gonna really enjoy this buggy. If I can reach out there and grab that. Okay, I got you, Dan. Dan's doing the hand signals. Oh, sweet. I'll get over there and I'll take the, the strap off. We have a splice right here. Now I found it's easier to just put the one log up and fit it and fit CR, the short log, on the other end and then come back and put the splice piece in. It just makes it a little easier because I'm not dealing with as much weight. I really don't want to be under that. There you go. I do. I never want to be under a piece of equipment. Yeah, I don't know why he needs you on that side. Oh, swing it to me a little bit. Sure. Can you reach it there? Yeah. All right. Uh, start bringing it down a little bit. Gently. Bring it out. Whoa. Bring it down. Ooh, we're just barely on down there, Dan. There it got. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, we're setting remainder of seawall is to be considered round 6 cm which is our splice since Dan's had more experience with these machines he's the one that's Giving David the, the signals. That's probably pretty good. I'm keeping my fingers out of the way. Alright, move out. No, you can't see what I'm doing here. Uh, 
trying to keep this up tight. Oh, sweet. Sweet. Hold on, David. Uh... You're going to need to tap in. You're way in there, Dan. I think we'll keep this machine. I like it. Thanks, Dan. Okay, round seven will go over. It'll be the header log or cap over log. We're looking at seawall. And before we set them, we always do our notch adjustment on the lower notch. So we set up a laser in here and I'll show you my little mark that I made. This little mark right here, if you can see that, is where the laser shot. And I was able to measure from that mark up to i'm tiptoeing here up to that mark right there and this was the highest corner so it will be our control corner and then we shot uh, all four corners and we can make our notch adjustment on the the lower notch which will be on this we're at d wall right now this notch right here on, that comes down will be the notch that we're actually making our adjustments on and that way we can have b b wall or d wall this is what we're looking at here and b wall down there will have them level and we'll be able to put the cap over logs or the header logs over c wall and i'll turn you around here and over a wall that's always a moment that i enjoy when we put the the header logs up the caps over the doors and the windows this is where we make the notch adjustment this is actually the center line and i needed to add 5 16 to the bottom of this to get it the same height up here when we set the logs on the wall and so i made my notch adjustment on the lower i set down 5 16 to get this to where it needs to be now you can see that there are some cuts in this this will be sitting over a window there will be four windows uh, two on each end and dan has cut these out and after we get the log on the wall then we'll come back and cut this this part here and drop this piece it's always safer to do that because when you cut approximately half of the height of the log it has a tendency to weaken it here and when you start to if you cut this out, it could bow on you. I've showed you this before on the Paradise Point cabin, but the angle iron slots are in. And you can see an electrical hole there. So we're getting pretty close to setting these up after they're hewed.
Dan is sanding the logs on the inside surface while they're on the horses. It cleans everything up. There will have to probably be a final sanding done after the roof goes on because these are going to get wet and discolor some. But Dan has taught this old man some stuff and I really appreciate this guy. I've looked forward to working with Dan for so many years and finally it's come to fruition and I'm really enjoying his his presence here and what he's adding to the job and the work that he's turned out. He's keeping me pretty busy on the wall as far as uh, doing the log fitting. That's kind of where I need to be at this point. I'm not sure if you can really tell anything about this, but that just makes such a nice surface. getting ready to set the D-wall that has had the notch adjustment on it. You can see that Dan has a guy rope on that. On the light end, it's so much easier to guide a log if you if you pull down on the light end, and it's also safer. I got you, Dan. You might be able to see I have bumped a wall out. I've got a pretty good gap here. I can't move C wall because it's a flush notch. There's no place for the, the log to slide. We have a three inch extension that, that hangs out past the, where the seven inches actually would be. And that gives me room to actually slide this log out so that we can get the other one on there. Then we'll bring this back and make our shoulder passes. As you can see, the C wall here is really close to the edge, so we can't move this log this way. We, we, when we set, we always move a wall. I got it, Dan. You got it? Yes, sir. I'll wait for you. You have to move in a little bit. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 